Hello everybody, my name is Al, I'm from Sauber Lab, and today will be another video about Proxmox. In this video we're gonna talk a little bit about users, group, permissions, and other things that will be interesting if you have more than one user for your Proxmox. Remember, this video is number 8, and if you didn't watch the previous videos, maybe you're gonna miss some information. Also, if you don't have Proxmox installed in your server, it's pointless for you to do this video. So, if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for this channel, and let's see how we can do it. So, before we start to go in permissions, we're gonna explain a little bit for our system. This is interesting to explain because if it's the first time that you're looking this video and you didn't watch my previous video, you're gonna understand what I have and that will create a little bit of curiosity for you in order to watch the other videos. First thing, you need to have Proxmox installed in your system. I suggest you to install Proxmox in a computer, a physical computer, not in a virtual machine because the risk that don't work and, and have some issues when you're using a virtual machine is really high and it's not worth to risk it. So have this one in mind, we're gonna look what system that we have. Here it's uh, my data center, as I told, the top level of my system, and here I have my node. This node, I have four cores and uh, eight gigabytes of run. But in this case of permissions, it's not so important which nodes that you have, because we're gonna configure it directly in our data center. In our data center, if we go here in permissions, we have options to configure our users. Before we start configuring our user, we're gonna come here in realms. Only for be clear, we have two kinds of users or two permissions of users. The first one will be Linux PUN standard authentication, and the second one will be Proxmox V authentication server. So it's interesting to know what's the difference between both and why I'm gonna use one and why I'm gonna use the second one. First of all, let's explain why is the idea for PUN. Basically, PUN, it's a Linux PUN standard authorization. It means that it's directly connect for your Linux server when you have your nodes. Your nodes normally, it's working using Linux. So you're gonna have access to the authentication from the Linux or from your node. And in the case of Proxmox, they will have authentication only for the Proxmox server. Uh, will make a little bit more settings in the future, but only for having an idea what options that you have. So first thing, we're gonna come here in user, and now we're gonna create a user. If I come here, add user, remember that I told that I have two permissions or two realms that you can set up, yes. Here I have the V and or I have the Linux. In our case, first we're gonna create our Linux authentication. So it will be Linux here, and I will create a user. And the name of user will be Sauber. And that's the group. I don't have any group, so I cannot select anything. The expire date, this one will be quite interesting if you want to get a, a trial for someone, or you know that someone will be doing some job only that specific time, and after this one they will stop to do this job. So if you forget to cancel the user, it's not a problem because they will expire anyway and they will not have access for it. And after with time you can delete it. And then you can put your name and surname and your email. Now in case we're not gonna put any information and here in comments, I will not put any comment. Once that add, I have my user Sauber. Now what can I do? I can try to log in with Sauber. Let's try to do it. Log out. I have a pun, I put Sauber. I cannot log in because it didn't set up password. So now, how can I log in with this user if I never set up password? This comes the point that we need to add as a Linux authentication. So let's log in again as a root. Now we need to add this user in our Linux authentication. For it, we're gonna open our node, and here our node, we come in shell. In shell is the time that you can check the users and add extra users. So what we can do, we can check if has been added this user red. To check if has been added this user red, we can run this step. Call, etc. password, and I run it. Don't worry about this cyber lab because it was a trial that I was doing before, so forget about it. But if I look, normally when I add extra users, they will add in the list here after 1000, and I don't have any sauber user add. 
So let's clear this page and I try to set a setup for user Sauber. So to set up it will be this step, password, Sauber and run it. And they say they don't have any user. It's strange because I created that user in my data center. Yes, you create, but you didn't create in your node specific. To create in your node will be easy. It will be add user Sauber and I put enter. Now they will say, what's the password? Let's put test one, two, three, the same way. Ask to repeat. And now I have all the informations, name and continue on. So I will only step it because I don't care about those information at this stage. Put yes and enter. Now I just create my user Sauber, define a password, exactly the same user that I create in my data center. So if I come here and run this step again, now right, I have my user Sauber. So now I can log out it. Now I can log in with Sauber. So I put Sauber and my password, leave as a pan and put now enter login. And now I have access from your web, web UI, my Proxmox, but I still don't have access for anything. Only know what's the user, token, double authentication, and that's it. You know why? Because you didn't define the permission of this user. We're gonna show it in a second, but first, Let's log out it and try to understand a little bit more about Plex connection, this one that we're gonna check now. So let's look as root again. Again, as a root, we can him users and that we're gonna add a second user. This second user will be a sober one and that I will select as a Proxmox V. When I select it, they already give me the option to set up a password. So let's set up our password. Group I don't have, permissions I don't have, so it's fine, I only put add. Once that I add, I have my user Sauber1. Let's try to see what's the difference and if I can access the same way or not. So, log out, I will put Sauber1, password that I have, and now I change for Proxmox V and put login. And I don't need to add this user for any node because they already have Proxmox access for it. So in this way, I don't need to do anything, but I still don't have access for anything because the permission is not properly set up. So let's log out and log in as a root again, choose set up our permissions. Remember, once that you're looking for root or the specific user, don't forget to change as a pun or as a V. I could potentially have exactly the same name of user either for pun or either for Proxmox V doesn't matter, but I only put a different one because I didn't want you to confuse that I create a shell only for this one. So now in here in permissions, I can uh, create a permission to the group or specific for the user permission. But in our case, we're gonna create a group for this permission. I come here in group, create a group, and I will say any name that I want. So it will be admin. Once that I put the group, I can set up a comment, but in my case, don't need, and I don't have any other information that I can set up. You're gonna ask why I needed to create a group, because here will be the name of your group, but uh, once that you set up your permissions, that they will allow you to do something or not. Other thing, before we go here in permissions and start to add our permissions, we're gonna come here in rules. Here in permissions, all the permission that has been already been set. And those permissions are quite interesting because we'll have a different applications. If you get as administrator, as the name say, you have uh, the administration right and you can do everything that you want. But if you go for no access, you have no access, what you currently have with your users, if you get P admin, you have those abilities or those permissions to perform. If you go for data set, admin data set, users. And one thing that's interesting, this user admin is interesting because if you have a person that the only thing that they need to do is to add users, you can create a permissions for own add users and that the rest they will not have access apart for add new users in the system. So once that you understand this table and know which option that you think that will be fit better for your needs, in my case will be the admin, so I'll select this one. But if you need others, you can uh, define a preset up one or you can set up one and would find it according to your needs. In my case, I will leave this standard and come here in permissions. Now in permissions that you can modify our permission according to our needs. So I come here, add permissions for group or users as I told, we're gonna get a group users, group admin, group 
admin uses and continue on. So I will get group permissions and I select the path that I want to allow these permissions. Suppose that this admin, I want to have only permissions for storage or for pool or for VMs or for access or you have access for everything. As I'm using as a root, I want to have access for everything. So select everything. Group, I will select the group. If I have more than one group, I can select the other group. And as a standard, they come as a rule, no access. We're gonna change it for admin because I want to have access for everything and do everything with that group. And I put add. So now I can come back my user and I can modify the user group. So let's get you sauber, edit, and I will put user group admin and I put okay. Now this user is part of admin group. And here, if I get sauber one as well, and put admin as well. Now those two users, it's part of the admin. And if I come here in my group, there will appear the name of the user. So the first one will be Sauber1, that is part of uh, Proxmox V. And the second one, it will be Sauber, what's part of BUN. So now we can check if this permission really allowed me to access it. So let's log out. Let's log in as a Sauber and put my password, that's one, two, three, and put enter. Now I have access for everything because I'm using as admin. So I have access for my node, I have access for my storage, my pools, and either to modify the group and set up things. So everything is here in the way that I want. But suppose that this user, you don't want to have a specific group admin. So let's close it, take out and come in my permissions, add user, and I select what path the same way. I select which user that I want to set up this permission. In my case, it will be Sauber1. And I want to be only as a user admin. So they will only have access to modify users, create new users and groups. So I'll put add. Let's try it, how it's work. Let's log out it and use as a Sauber1. Sauber and now I will put my password and I put uh, Proxmox V and put login. Now that's login, this user only have permission to change groups and create new users. So, so they don't have access for my node and they don't have access for anything else apart from my user. So in this way, I can uh, add new users. I can modify some users. Suppose that I want to add a user Sauber2. I want to be a Proxmox. If you put Linux, you then need to add authentication in your Sauber Lab, and as you are access it, you don't have access for the shell, so it's better to put as a Proxmox. Password, let's put our password. And set up a new group. I can select the group and put add. So in this way, you can create others users, set up a new groups, or add those users to the group. And come here, I don't have access for anything. Now you're gonna ask, Alan, I don't understand why in the world you're gonna use the pun instead of Proxmox. What's the need to use the pun? And I will say, it's quite simple. Pun, it's more folks for the SSH access. And this SSH, it's when you want to access your node to this uh, prompt command and use the shell to set up some information. If you don't need to do it, it's totally fine for you to use the Proxmox. But if you have a reason to use the PUN, or if you have a reason to use the SSH, so you're gonna need to use the PUN exactly for do this configuration. So basically, if you use PUN, you need to have uh, two jobs. First one is to create the user, and the second is to create the user in your node, and if you have more nodes, you need to create a user in the other nodes that you have. I guess of Proxmox that you only need to create a user in the Proxmox. But if you want to use SSH, you cannot use a Proxmox user because they don't have access for your node specific, but your pun has. So it's a balance, give or take, and you decide what fit better for your application. Also, which kind of user that you need to choose or which kind of you group that's fit better for you. So I hope that has been clear what's the difference between a PAN user and a Proxmox user. Also, how you can create uh, different users, group, and edit the permissions and why, which permission that you're gonna use. This video I try to produce because I think that's interesting, principally if you're not all use this Proxmox only for yourself, 
but for production and others can understand what's the best option in each case. So if you like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time.